Hi guys! The Mayo Clinic and collaborated with the American Heart Association and created this DASH diet or your D-A-S-H diet which stands for um, Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. So uh, they mainly focus on how um, if, you're, if you're hypertensive and already on medication, how do we um, incorporate this in our lifestyle so that eventually uh, if your blood pressure is consistently normal, then your doctor can wean you off of that medication. Or if you have a strong family history of hypertension, then how can you avoid even uh, starting um, medication for, for high blood pressure? Because when you go to your doctor, even if your blood pressure is 140 over 90 for the first time, they won't diagnose you as hypertension because in a 24-7 scenario, your blood pressure can change in a heartbeat depending on if you're angry with your husband, for example, or any stresses in your life. So that increases if, we, if you are well rested, if you have enough sleep. So in other medical centers, they, have, uh, they put you this device, but not all hospitals has it that measures your blood pressure 24 7 at different occasion that's why uh you may the doctor may require you to have at least three doctor visits at different times to really figure out if your blood pressure is consistently high because before you will uh even get a diagnosis of high blood pressure and even that they would always start with lifestyle change first so uh, you can see that the, the lifestyle change is very powerful in uh, avoiding or even treating um, uh, hypertension. And we have to shift our paradigm or our mindset that, you know, once you are hypertensive, you will be forever hypertensive. I know a lot of people that uh, the doctor has already weaned them off of the medication because they, they started doing exercise, they started uh, doing the DASH diet. So the DASH diet is focusing more on uh, fruits, uh, nuts, legumes, uh, whole grains, and uh, vegetable. That's pretty much the focus, those with high fiber diet. And then avoiding foods that are processed. Why? Because every time the food is already processed in cans, like say uh, noodles, um, ramen, uh, pickled whatever, pickled this, pickled that, you know, they usually are loaded with salt in order to preserve them. So if you um, avoid this lifestyle, you are already ahead of the game because uh, you are already uh, lessening the sodium content. Well, speaking of sodium, just remember this to be easy. Every time you have a lot of sodium, it invites water with it. So it's always sodium is married to water. So what does it mean? If you have a lot of sodium in your body, then you invite more water. That means more blood volume. Again, more blood volume means more work for the heart because the heart has to beat stronger and faster in order to empty the heart of the, the increased uh, blood volume, okay? Also food that are rich in potassium. So why is it? It's almost like uh, potassium stabilizes the effect of uh, sodium in our cells. So it kind of like neutralizes the effect of sodium. So foods that are rich in potassium, for example, is avocado, potato, sweet potato, orange juice, uh, beets, um, spinach is also rich in um, potassium. So be mindful of that. Also, one research said that if we have less vitamin D in our diet, we're also prone to um, hypertension. So get your vitamin D, get out. It's a beautiful day in California, like, and it's free. Go out there, walk under the sun and get your, your vitamin D. Also uh, take your supplements like calcium, magnesium. These are important uh, supplements that will decrease um, our blood pressure. Also banana, you know that it's a universal, you know, news that banana is rich in potassium you have to take your potassium and also uh, I want to reiterate that um, if you've been eating like really bad food um, give grace to yourself we are not suggesting that you know you've been eating McDonald's and pizza and all that and suddenly tomorrow you're clean like 
it's impossible you know uh it's we want a smooth transition like probably today or next you're gonna you're gonna cut off processed food you're gonna cut off dessert you're gonna lessen your uh fast food that way there's a smoother transition and also let's say if you fail one or two days get back up again and start eating clean okay also exercise you know the american heart association uh, recommends only 30 minutes per day five days a week sitting alone in your couch is as bad as smoking so it could be that hey i'm not smoking but you're always watching tv uh, on your couch so it's just as bad as uh, smoking and getting you know like cancer or if you are 18 and above at least you check your blood pressure every two years if you're 40 and above go visit your doctor and at least um, check your blood pressure annually also avoid saturated fat yeah what is that these are the fat or trans uh, trans fat uh, present in your uh, Doritos and your soda and your ramen just avoid that we don't we don't need that kind of, of, of food one more thing about exercise not just for hypertension is that remember we've been mentioning to you about apoptosis you know it's apoptosis is programmed cell death when we approach aging like 40 and above it's because of apoptosis well, apoptosis has uh, both a uh, beneficial effect if it's going to destroy um, cancer cells. That's why for people with cancer, we pray that the Lord will activate the apoptosis, the programmed cell destruction of those cells that has a tendency to become um, cancer cells. Well, the thing is, Apoptosis is also the one that's going on when we are aging. Let's say if you're 40 and above, there's actually a program cell death of your heart cells or your myocytes. So that as you grow older, as we said, you are prone to high blood pressure and uh, heart diseases. Again, it's because of apoptosis. There's no inflammation here. There's no necrosis or destruction of your cells. But the effect of exercise is opposite. This time, it slows the apoptosis because God knows he uses uh, he used exercise to actually slow down aging. See, we've been going to different dermatologists trying to put whatever at night just to lift up whatever is falling down. But God is saying, you know what? Exercise is the best anti-aging cream because it uh, it just uh, decreases the the cell signaling in the mitochondria where apoptosis or programmed cell death is happening. Also, I want to reiterate that this is a shifting to a DASH diet or, or choosing to live in a consistent, healthy lifestyle demands a commitment. It demands a decision. You don't take it lightly. You just have to make a decision that, you know what? I have the grace of God. I can do this. God is partnering with me. And uh, this is a, a decision or an intention to take care of the temple of the Holy Spirit. We think worship is raising hands and singing songs, but based on Romans 12, God is saying that how what we do, what we put on in our body, the decisions we make, the choices we make is worship. We need to say that if we um, consider um, eating the right food um, to take care of ourselves, exercising to maintain this temple of the Holy Spirit as worship, then I think we, we would be more encouraged to, to, to choose a healthy lifestyle, not only to honor our body because, man, we are image bearer. We, we were created to reflect Him. And uh, every time we went on to our part and, you know, we gain weight, we have obesity, we have diabetes, and then we try to evangelize the world about our amazing Jesus but then physically we show uh, decisions character that as a result of lack of self-control how the Word of God says that we have made our belly or our appetite or the lust of the flesh as our God then the world won't believe our witness when God has told us to be you know that the light of this world so I think um, it's more of an encouragement that we are doing this as a witness of who our God is and how we honor our body 
to bring glory to His name. So thank you guys. I hope you're encouraged this afternoon. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen.